Well, here we go. Let me tell you, I think I'm a little bit late, but it's fine. It's fine. I think things are going okay now. The recording. Okay. So it is a beautiful Monday night. <clears throat> I know I'm a little late on this, but hey, can you really blame me? The NLL draft happened last night, and I mean, with Brendan O'Neill going number one to the Philadelphia Wings, I mean, what can you say? What can you say that hasn't already been said? Brendan O'Neill is a phenomenal player. You got a lot of guys from either Canada or from some colleges in the U.S. that got drafted, but obviously the most notable of these that is currently that is currently playing in the PLL is Brendan O'Neill. And speaking of the PLL, the PLL championship happened yesterday afternoon, and the Utah Archers have once again won the PLL championship behind Brett Dobson and a phenomenal attack. You know, they defeat the Maryland Whip Snakes 12-8, who... And Maryland, honestly, you know, I don't know how they got back to the championship, but they got back to it. You know, New York blew it. Carolina, eh, not up the snuff. Boston, not up the snuff. You know, Denver, eh, wasn't up the snuff. But ultimately, you know, the curse was broken of, you know, teams that went to the championship going back, you know, of not going back to back, but instead being runners up you know, the very next season, and that trend was finally broken with Utah winning their second championship, the Archers winning their second title, and they joined Maryland, the Whips, with their second title as having the most PLL championships. Now for the thing that, you know, kind of got a lot of people ticked off, and myself included. Of course, you know, Six Nations with the Ross they built up, they, they, beat, they beat Victoria in five games to win their eighth man cup, second straight man cup, by the way. But the problem with all this was, was that, you know, the WLA, Lacrosse Canada, and other parties involved were trying to get in the way of things. You know, Mike Messenger and Will Malcolm were trying to, you know, play for Victoria in the man cup. And everybody initially said no. Lacrosse Canada initially said no. It took them long enough, but again, the, the roster that Six Nations had was just too much in the end, you know. Again, and it's 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 just the way things are, you know, with the Canadian side of things. And you know, when I started 18 months ago to really kind of cover, you know, box lacrosse in Canada, I really thought I was on to something, but. I, I just generally, again, like I've been saying over the past couple of videos that I've done on lacrosse, um, I'm just generally disinterested in stuff like this, like this type of stuff right here. You know, it, it does not look good. It's been in shambles the entire season. You know, like I like there there's disasters. You know, you know each and every week in arena indoor football. There's disasters each and every week. That's fun to cover. That's fun to cover because we know arena indoor football, you know, doesn't really, you know, work like that. It just doesn't work like that, it, it, and it hasn't been. But for a sport that's been around for, you know, several hundred, maybe even a thousand years, you know, that, you know, people are finally, you know, starting to catch up on to, and the leadership, you know, is just incompetent. It's not just it's not just a bunch of egos and you know people getting pissed at each other and people playing in warehouses and stuff like that and barns and nonsense like that. No, it's just it's just the silly stuff. It's just the silly stuff. It's even it's less silly than that. It's not as petty. It's less silly and it's just more like what are you doing? It's more of like what are you doing here? What are we doing here? Like, there's no reason that. You know, they that these two guys shouldn't have been playing, you know, from game one. There's no reason that they shouldn't have. And it doesn't make any sense. It really doesn't. You know, Brett Dobson should be the PLL MVP, but he's not. I don't know why. I mean, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I love Blaze Rudin. I love that guy. He's one of the best goalies of all time. But do I think he should be deserving of the PLL, you know, goalie of the year every year? 
like he's had it like the last five or six years? No, I don't think so. I think this was Dobson's award this year yet again, but he what? But he simply wasn't. Jeff T, you know, rightfully deserves PLL MVP, rightfully, because he had the best. He had one of the best. Seasons. He had probably the best season in all of lacrosse of all time. You know, one of the best anyway. And yet you're telling me the the PLL championship MVP can win goalie, goalie of the year. Come on now, man. Come on now. So, yeah, the dispersal draft happened in the NLL. So before we, you know, really kind of wrap this up, because I don't want to make this too long. Um, the dispersal draft happened. Panther City is indeed dead. Home openers have been announced for some teams, or if not all of them by now. Um, the NLL will begin Thanksgiving weekend. It will begin the weekend of Black Friday, and we're going to start on Friday, November the 29th, go all the way up until sometime in April, because I know Toronto's home dates got leaked, but the schedule, the actual schedule will be released tomorrow at noon Eastern time. Of course, the World Box Lacrosse Championships are coming up as well, so that will be the last thing we cover before we take a little hiatus from talking lacrosse and, you know, wait it out for another six, seven weeks, and then we'll get back rolling with the um, NLL season getting started and everything like that. So I'm trying to figure out, you know, what in the world's going to happen. You know, as it currently stands right now, I do not want to talk about the Minto Cup anymore. I do not want to talk about the Man Cup anymore. I will talk about, you know, the world lacrosse, and we'll talk about the world games and everything like that. Probably not going to talk about Olympics. Probably not going to talk about Olympic sixes. I do not care for sixes. I've said this before. Women's lacrosse, um, unfortunately, Athletes Unlimited does not qualify for me. I am not a player-based type of guy that wants to simply cover just the players like that unless it's volleyball. Because volleyball, you can get attached to certain teams that the team together for a long period of time. But Athletes Unlimited is just not that. And there is no real pro women's field league and there really isn't a box one either there is one but again it's hard for me to talk about it because i can't find anything on it can't really find where to watch stuff and that's just kind of been the big problem with me you know with with canadian box in the summer because it's just been hard to watch everything you know that's again that's the one big thing the other thing that i've really really noticed over the past few months is the amount of the amount of incompetent leadership that really, you know, like we should be having new people making some of these decisions, like where, where's, you know, where's Alberta? If Alberta could be, you know, competing for a Minto Cup, why not a Man Cup as well? You know, why is the Man Cup a best of seven? Is it even the hardest trophy to win in sports? Is it even the trophy that people want to win anymore? That's a big question. That's honestly a big question. Is this the trophy? that people aspire to win in Canada anymore. You know, you have American guys coming up here to own their craft in the summer to, you know, get themselves drafted in the PLL and the NLL at this point. And it's like, I just just don't know at this point. Like, I'm genuinely just surprised that I, I felt the way that I felt. I wish I did not feel the way I felt about box lacrosse in Canada. But it's just like I just don't have the drive to cover the OJLL or the the BCJAL or or even the RMLL or or the W or the WLA or the MSL. I just don't have the drive. I don't have the moxie. I don't have the moxie to cover the the other you know senior B cups like the Presidents and the Founders Cup. I just don't have. I never had the drive to cover those. But hey, at least the Presidents was. You know, free to watch on YouTube. Can you say that about, you know, the Man Cup? I mean, it was on Rogers TV, but who has that? Not everybody has that. You know, the Mento, it, it was it was a rough going because who's going to pay that much? And it's the same thing with World Across, by the way, paying forty nine ninety nine for like 120 games over the course of 10 days. I don't want to do that. You know, I'll just take the two that are on ESPN because I don't really care at this point. Like I'm kind of, I'm kind of tuckered out, you know, from lacrosse for right now, and I'm ready for the NLL season to be quite honest with you. So, 
the fact that the World Box Cross Championships are now, you know, right after PLL just ended, you know, it's kind of it's 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 something. It, it's this thing that happens. I mean, don't get me wrong, and we all know who's and we all know who's going to be the top three. So why are we even playing this? But you know what? I'm not gonna complain. I'm not gonna complain because we're gonna get some good lacrosse on at least, you know, on at least you know most of these days. We're gonna get some good lacrosse, and I'm gonna at least watch one of the um, pool play games on TV before watching the gold medal game, and that's the U.S. and Canada game on the 24th. I'm going to be watching that on, I think it's like ESPN U or something like that. I think it's either ESPN2 or ESPN U. I don't know, because of WBA playoffs and everything like that. So going to be some good lacrosse over the next few weeks. So, you know, when the world games start, or rather when the world championships start on September the 20th, It'll go all the way up to the 29th, and we'll come back and talk, hopefully on the 29th, like actually on the 29th and not the 30th. Hopefully that does not happen again, you know. So from me to you, we need to get on out of here, and we're going to talk college football tomorrow, NFL on Wednesday, and, you know, some WNBA on Saturday. And then on next Monday, we'll talk some volleyball because there is no volleyball games next Monday in the college ranks, so. Um, I'm excited for the next week on this channel. And remember, build the brand. That's the motto we go by here. Take care, everybody. Hope you enjoy your Monday night like I will. And yeah, get on out of here.